NPMs are a, a group of hematological disorders of neoplastic origin in which there is a, an abnormal proliferation of uh, a stem cell and this results in the overproduction of uh, all the elements of the blood, red blood cell, platelets and white cells. There are actually a number of disorders which would come under this umbrella term but the three most common ones are essential thrombocythemia or ET which is characterised by an elevated number of platelets these are cells which have a predominant function in blood clotting and, and, and bleeding. Uh, the second disorder is polycythemia vera, which is associated primarily with an increase in red cell number, but often in an increase in other cell numbers as well. So this disorder, if you like, is the opposite of anemia. And the third and less common disorder is known as myelofibrosis, where there may be an increase in cell numbers, but more commonly, the bone marrow, instead of being soft and spongy in a nursery-like environment for blood cell production, becomes stiffened and scarred, and the blood cell numbers fall, the spleen enlarges. All these disorders are very closely related and may change from one to the other. Um, in particular, for patients with polycythemia vera and essential thrombocythemia, there is a tendency over time to develop uh, myelofibrosis. For some of these patients, particularly with those with polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytemia, the life expectancy is not significantly reduced compared to the control population. The situation is different in patients with primary myelofibrosis that have uh, more aggressive disorders and their life expectancy may be reduced compared to the control population. So under this aspect, they are clearly different from acute hematological disorders, say acute leukemias. So the commonest question a patient's going to ask in the clinic is, why have I got this? Why did I get myelofibrosis? And we don't really have any very good answers for patients and that, that's really deeply frustrating I think for the patients and their family but also very frustrating as a clinician. Um, clearly uh, we know a lot more and we've learned a lot more in the last five years. Some of the uh, recent advances in the field though include that there clearly now appears to be a genetic predisposition perhaps to developing these diseases but I think we've really got a long way to go in understanding why these diseases arise and what the other predispositions may well be.